Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about um, I'm going to talk about Revit and I'm going to talk about using Dynamo to parse an HTML file, uh, the warning file from Revit. So if you were to go to warnings, you can export those and save those up as an HTML file. And then if I was to save that file somewhere on the desktop. Uh, Actually, let me get one. So, if I was to save that file somewhere on my desktop, you can see it right here. Um, this is the HTML file, and this is what it looks like. Um, and then it lists all the IDs for the elements and the warning types uh, over here. So, previously I was kind of manually going through this and it, it just annoys me. Uh, selecting all of these, copy pasting them into Revit and then uh, selecting all those elements and isolating them. But if you were to take that warning HTML file and change its uh, extension to a TXT, that will make it into a, a source code file basically for that HTML uh, website. So you get all those HTML tags, body tags and whatnot, and everything is uh, kind of uh, structured up in a way that we can import it into Dynamo and parse it. So, so what I was doing is I was actually uh, pointing to that file, and then I'm using a string to get a warning type, like a specific warning that I'm looking after. Not all the warnings are really solvable uh, quickly you can like there's there's certain warnings like for example a sketch line would be off uh, off axis uh, but a sketch line inside of like another element so you can't really select that particular element uh, you will have to select the host edit it and then you can select the, uh, the sketch lines but for the for the all the other ones like a room separation lines on top of the wall. You can quickly uh, parse that file and get all the information needed from it. So what I'm actually getting out of that file is the, the warning type name and I'm getting all the IDs as a list. These are all the IDs that cause the warning. So this could be a room separation line or a wall. And then I'm also getting some other uh, potentially useful information which is number of warnings uh, generated uh, number of this type of warning, so that I have ten types of ten ten warnings that say a wall and room separation line overlap. And I also have two other warnings because my total warnings for this file is twelve. And this is actually a small number, really small. You're probably gonna get more warnings, uh, and you know one day will it work. But this is an example file for me, so I just had to kind of uh, generate a few warnings, and this is enough for me. Uh, so this this could potentially help keeping track of how many warnings you have in the file uh, from week to week. I'm going to work on uh, maybe setting up a little, uh, uh, exporting maybe that number to some sort of server to keep track of it. Uh, but that that's for the future. But also another thing that I usually do is I would, you know, get all these IDs and then it will be, I usually isolate those elements in the view because I want to do a visual check whether it is really a warning that I'm concerned with and I can fix really quickly or do I just let it be and I move on. So this part of the definition isolates those uh, those elements uh, that cause the warning in the view so you can fix them. So if I'm in this particular floor plan really quickly. You can see the red lines are the room separation lines and they're, they're the ones that are causing the error because they're on top of the walls. They overlap with the walls. Um, so if I was to refresh, refresh this and run it, I would have to point it to the right error file and there you go. So it isolates all those elements and then you can go through and clean them out. So that's it. That's pretty quick, pretty easy. 
Um, I'm going to try to have it posted to my blog uh, at archie-lab.net. Um, you can check in on, on the YouTube channel or um, follow me on Twitter at arc uh, underscore laboratory. Alright, thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned for future videos.